In this video, we'll talk about the CSF profile analysis for the meningitis. This is a high yield video for USMLE step one. So what is meningitis? Meningitis simply means the inflammation of the meninges. So here is the skull just for your orientation. Underneath that, there would be dura mater, arachnoid mater and pyometer, which are different parts of the meninges. And the overall inflammation of the meninges is known as meningitis. Meningitis can be caused due to many reasons. But just to give you an idea, this is how a normal and a infected meninges look like. And the reason for meningitis could be bacterial. There are bacteria like Streptococcus pneumoniae, Neisseria meningitis, Listeria monocytogenes, Haemophilus influenzae can possibly lead to bacterial meningitis. There are viruses which can cause meningitis, like Coxsackie virus, like Herpes virus, like HIV virus, etc. There could be also fungal meningitis, which is caused by different types of uh, fungus, like Cryptococcus and Coxiditis. Then there is parasitic meningitis, which can be caused by tapeworm and Plasmodium falciparum. So these are bit rare compared to the other format of meningitis. But anyway, whatever may be the format, the question is how does a clinician would know that what is the causal infect agent behind this meningitis? Because each of the case there would be an inflammation in the meninges. So in order to do that, a clinician would look at the CSF profile of the patient. So after lumbar puncture, CSF is collected. And that CSF is tested for bio biochemical uh, components, which we would look into much more details. So CSF profile is very important for understanding many disease and its pathology. So normally CSF has this composition. It has very less amount of protein, substantial amount of glucose, and, and different concentration of different ions like chloride, calcium, magnesium, and potassium. But also it's very important to note that lymphocytes are very less. Like there are only like about five or even less than five cells per cubic millimeter. Now the question is what really happens when there is an infection? So we would try to understand these in context of appearance of the CSF, opening pressure, WBC count, protein content and glucose level. So. In case of control, it would be a clear fluid. But when there is a bacterial meningitis, there is turbid, turbid fluid in, the, uh, in this scenario. Then the protein level for all kinds of meningi meningitis, the protein level would be increased because the blood uh, CSF barrier and the blood brain barriers are kind of compromised. So some amount of protein leaks in and it increases the amount of protein in the CSF. Then there is overall WBC count. It has to be very less. If there is more amount of WBC in the uh, CSF, then there is some kind of infection. Now, if mostly they are neutrophils, then it might be bacterial. If mostly they are lymphocyte, then it might be viral. Also, glucose level utilization in the, many, many, in, in the overall CSF is really important. Because bacteria can utilize a lot of glucose and that's why in case of bacterial meningitis, the glucose level would be very low in CSF. Also, in case of fungal meningitis, the level is also low. And the opening pressure differences are also uh, one of the factor to cross check. For example, elevated level of opening pressure means most likely bacterial meningitis. So how does a clinician proceed with all this data? So they ask, is there an infection? If there is an infection, there would be more WBCs in the CSF, right? In all, and also, there would be elevated level of protein, be it any kind of meningitis. If these two answers are no, then there is no infection. If these two answers are yes, then the clinician would check. What type of WBC is elevated? Is it PMN or is it monocyte? If it is PMN or neutrophils, then it would be most likely bacterial meningitis or pyogenic meningitis. If the WBC is comprised of mostly monocytes, then it might be a viral meningitis. And what about the fungus? In case of fungal meningitis, there is an increase in monocytes. Also, there is hypoglycemia. That means fair reduction in glucose. 
Now, it has to be understood that level, uh, reduction in glucose level is common for both bacterial and fungal meningitis. But the cell type which is elevated here in fungus is monocyte, not neutrophils. So this is how a clinician could get a broad idea that what type of infection happened in case, in, in case of uh, uh, meningitis. And this kind of diagnosis would help them to treat the condition in a more efficient way. I hope this was useful. If you want to get more flashcard and note, visit our Facebook page, follow us on Instagram, visit our website. All links are provided in the description. You can support our channel using PayPal, Paytm or UPI. You can click on the super thanks option to support us. And see you in next video.